guys. How you going? Um, <laughs> thank you. I can see people in the chat. So that's always exciting when I come straight on and there's people in the chat. So, yeah, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm here doing a solo again this week. Um, Bron's having a, a, a couple of weeks off YouTube. So um, the next couple of weeks you might see me solo again. So I kind of thought today would be a good day to, you know, like talk about my first year of reselling because um, just April that's just gone, I started reselling full time in April last year. And when I was trying to think of what to write today, I was like, well, maybe I can talk about my first year and tell you all about it and tell you some things that I've learned along the way and some mistakes and yeah, so let me just see who is in this chat and say hello to everyone. Um, I was going to wear a ponytail today because, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> I decided on the hat. My hair is due for a colour. It is very um, looking very dark roots. <laughs> so you've got the hat today. Um, hey, Murray, how you going? Um, Daryl's in and Ian, how you going? Nick's here. Thanks for coming, Nick. Drew, hey, Lainey, what have you got here? You're amazing. I hope you're wearing a sock. I've worn the hat and the pony. Does that give me double bonus? <laughs> um, sorry, I can't stay awake. <laughs> These meds are knocking me out. Night, Lainey. Thanks for popping in. <laughs> Um, hey Ken, um, Gay's here. Hi Gay, fast or I don't know how you say this, fast or FA, fast. Hi Karen, nice to see you. That's a new name. Welcome if this is your first time here. Hi Liz, the thrifting Aussie, um, junk girl Patty, Dave. Oh, so many here. Julie Curry, I think that's another new name. Hi Julie. Hey Krillin, hey going. Matt's here. You're digging the side. <laughs> digging my digging my hat. Um, hey, Shen Shen and Gimbal's here. Kelly. Oh, who'd I miss? Hey, Aid. How you going? <laughs> hey, Brad. Jazz, if you're there. Phil. Did I just disappear? Oops, empty hangers here. Oh, if anybody is new, but just put your hands up, say hello. Everybody in the chat here is really welcoming and um, we like to see new faces. So, yeah, if you're new, um, put, a, put your hands up and say hello so we all know if you're new. Hey, Robin. Hey, Wendy. Um, oh, geez, there's a few of you here. I don't know. Well done. <laughs> Mo Angie, that's another new name. Hello, hello. Um, huh, okay. Yeah, you lost me for a minute. I don't know what happened there, Nick. That just went off. That was weird, wasn't it? Oh, well, hopefully it doesn't do that again. <laughs> okay, so a year of selling full-time on eBay and, wow, it's been a massive, massive year. I have learnt so much. I have made so many new friends. I have started YouTube. I am just, um, oh, like it's just been an it's been an incredible year. It's been a year of ups and downs. <laughs> I've moved house. Um, you know, heaps has happened, and yeah, it's just oh, like looking back on it. When I actually started to write notes on it, I was like, wow, like. Just when you sit down and you actually reflect on what you've done or what's happened, like, I don't know, it's really quite amazing. And some of the questions that you guys sent me on Instagram to ask in today, to ask me about today, like really made me um, stop and stop and think. I think Judah had a really good one and I'll, I'll say it later, but it really made me like have to think about things. <laughs> so, and so. Oh, yay, Ashley. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for coming in. 
And um, Julie's saying she's watched before. I don't think I've seen you live. I'm normally asleep. Well, welcome. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I guess it's I, I don't even know where to start, but um, I guess I'll, I'll go back to the beginning a little bit on how I started selling full time. So I had been reselling um, part time oh, for about a year, I guess, before before I went full time. And and I just kind of had started it when I was sick. If you guys have followed my journey for a little while, you know that I had breast implants and they were poisoning me. <laughs> Basically, my body was rejecting them. Those breast implants were 12 years old and um, my body for the probably for the five years or so before started to um, reject them. I started to get a lot of autoimmune type issues, even though I didn't have any autoimmune problems. Um, you know, I was very unwell and um, in the end I had to kind of stop working in my other job where I was a photographer, a family photographer. I was just finding it too hard. I was in constant pain and shooting all the time was just um, just too hard. So I took some time off um, shooting and just kind of was doing it very minimally and um, during that time, I started to kind of look at what else I might be able to do to supplement the income that I was losing. And that's when I found reselling. So um, I found reselling and started doing it a little bit on the side. And when I started reselling, I was selling brand new Nike shoes. Um I was following some sneakerheads in America and um, they were selling a lot of Nikes and I was like, I wonder if I can do that here in Australia. And so I started reselling shoes. And um, one, I think that's where my love for sh selling shoes came from. But um, that's basically how I started this journey. And so, um, yeah, then I had surgery and had my implants removed and I kind of thought I would take about three months off to fully heal from that surgery because it is quite major surgery and I had a lot of health issues from it so I thought I'll take three months off and then I'll be set and I'll be able to go back to phot photography and um, you know everything will just I'll just keep doing you know shoes and stuff on the side and everything will be sweet and a few months after that surgery, I started to realize that I actually didn't want to go back to photography. I started to feel so much better health-wise, and I started to realize how much stress and anxiety that photography was bringing to my life. And I decided that I didn't want to go back to that stress and anxiety. Um, and I was really enjoying the reselling. So I was starting to follow more and more people in America, pretty much in America. And I just kind of decided, look, I wonder if I can give this a bit more of a crack and um, if I could even experiment in some um, secondhand stuff. And yeah, I decided to just, that was how I, that was how I did it. I think I'd had my surgery in the November of 2018. By February, I had decided I well and truly didn't want to go back to photography. And so by April, I was amping things up and decided to go full time and made the commitment to fully, fully stop doing photography. I 100% told my clients I wasn't coming back to shoot anymore. And um, I kind of let that, let that side go, which was hard because at first I was kind of trying to juggle both. I was trying to I wasn't sure. I, was I trying to do reselling or was I trying to do photography? And I, I was still kind of clients would message me, old repeat clients. I had a lot of repeat clients. Um, when are you coming back? We're waiting for our annual shoot, blah, blah, blah. And I was so torn. And then, yeah, by April, I just had made that call and said, I'm, I'm not shooting at the moment. So sorry. So, yeah, <laughs> that's that. Let me just check if there's <laughs> Thanks, Brad. Um, oh, where are me? I just check in that I haven't missed any questions as I go along the way, and then I will see. Um, thanks, Toby. Um, anyway, I'll keep going. So <laughs> I'm probably going to ramble, ramble, get my verbal diarrhea going. 
Okay, so I decided to go full time in April and I was still selling Nike shoes like all the time. I probably had about 60 pairs of Nike shoes in my store. Um, and what happened was one day I went to Nike and I was buying them from the outlets and I had about a dozen pairs of shoes and I had like most of them in there knew me like I was I was in there three times a week probably sometimes more um, I would always buy three or four pairs of shoes at a time and sometimes if they had a big sale I was buying you know eight ten pairs of shoes so most of the staff knew me some of them knew me by name I never actually told them what I was doing but I figured they were guessing <laughs> and one day I went in there it was a weekend it was super busy they had this running sale on, I think it was 40% off, and I packed up. I had about 12 pairs of shoes. My daughter was sitting down on the corner wall playing her iPad, and I just kept piling these shoes up next to her. And then when we went to the counter, they said to me, um, it was a new girl that I, I didn't recognise, and she said to me, oh, I need to make sure you're not a reseller. I need you to sign like a waiver, like a form that says that you're not planning to resell these shoes. And I was like, okay. And I was like, oh, shit. Um, so then she went off looking for this form and it was so busy. They were absolutely packed in there. And then she came back and the the manager guy who was kind of next to her, or one of the, the full-timers or whatever he was, someone that I recognised, he said to her, what are you doing? And she said, I'm looking for the form that makes sure she's not a reseller. And and this guy kind of said, she's fine. She's fine. Just do the sale and keep se keep serving. So I'm wiping the sweat off me, going, yep, no worries, thanks. Paid for my shoes, left, and then went home and it was like a light bulb moment where I went, oh, wow, like I have been fully relying on selling Nike shoes from an outlet that could close down at any time or could stop me from reselling. If that, I didn't even know that was a rule. Um, you know, I was so used to following the Americans and they just can go in there and buy heaps of shoes to resell. So that was kind of like a light bulb moment where for me where I went, if I'm going to do this as a business, I need to look outside the box and I can't just rely on one niche. Um, I need to sell something else, <laughs> something that I'm allowed. So that's when I started going to the thrift stores and I started going into clothes and um, I still kept doing shoes. I thoroughly enjoy doing shoes. I enjoy photographing them. Um and yeah, I love doing shoes still. I like, I just, I just like them. Um, so yeah, I started going into thrift shops and looking around and buying clothes and shoes and books. And pretty much I still sell clothes and shoes and books. And yes, I still buy the odd pair of Nikes to resell, not very often. Um, but I still go in there occasionally and if they've got a sale on, then I will buy a few pairs of shoes. Um, but I don't buy anywhere near the amount of um, shoes that, you know, I was buying. At any given time, I might have half a dozen pairs of brand new Nikes here. Um, nothing like the 60 that I that I was having at one stage. Um, so what did I learn from buying what mistakes maybe did I learn buying thrift shop clothes? Um, I guess some of the mistakes I made in the early days was I didn't look up comps and I probably overpaid on some of the items that I was purchasing, some of the clothes. I was probably paying seven, eight, ten dollars $10. I was buying clothes that maybe weren't on the half price days or the $2 days. Um, I was paying more full price, I guess, going, oh, yep, this brand country road I'll happily pay you know eight ten bucks for that and and sell it and and sometimes I was paying too much for items um I I guess I also bought brands that maybe I wouldn't buy again um and there's pros and cons to all this because the the pros were I wasn't looking up comps so I actually learned from my mistakes and I actually probably tried brands that if I'd looked them up on comps, I might not have sold them. Um, I might not have purchased them in the beginning. And sometimes just because it's not selling hugely on eBay, it doesn't mean it's not going to sell. So my store is based around a volume-based store and I'm happy to make some smaller profits on items. So I guess sometimes you would look up a brand and say, I'm not going to buy that. Like there's not enough money in it for me. But 
the thing that I've learned along the way is that some brands, even if they don't make you a lot of money, they move very quickly. So I'm all for making smaller profits on items that ma that move quickly. So if there is a brand that might not be so popular or, um, you know, that other resellers might not be looking to pick up because they might just think there's not enough money in it, if I know that that item's going to move quickly, then I'm still going to pick it up. So, yeah, so that's... Um, Kelly, <laughs> I bet the manager of Nike's missing you in your sales. I actually felt like I'd become really good friends with one of the guys. <laughs> he was so nice and he would like actually like say, oh, Mel, you know, these ones are a really good good price for you today. And, um, yeah, I actually I kind of miss going in there on those days. But, yeah, I, I, I guess I got too busy going to thrift shop, shops and stuff that I don't actually go out to the outlets very often now and normally the only time I buy them now is if I'm actually going to the outlets to look for something for myself personally or if I need to go buy something for one of my kids um, then I might stop in there and, and have a bit of a squeeze but it's not very often that I make the trip to, um, with the intention to go and buy shoes Nikes to resell anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> I curse you and your country road. I, country road still sells well for me, but you just can't overpay on it. And 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 that's like with anything. And that takes experience and that takes learning. And um, there's different styles of country road that will sell better than others. And really that all comes down to experience and just the more you sell clothes, the more you know what styles and fit and all that kind of thing will sell faster and and somebody did ask me that um i'm just trying to find that question sorry um oh, i can't see it they asked me basically how what is my eye looking for when i go to the thrift shop how do i know what to look for and one i think that just comes down to practice experience going out three, four, five days a week looking for stock, um, noting what sells in your own store. Like if I sell a lot of um, pencil skirts, then I'm going to be looking for more pencil skirts when I go out thrifting. If I sell um, a lot of skinny jeans, then I know that I want to look for skinny jeans rather than flared jeans or something. So I think it comes down to just experience practice um the the longer you do it um your eye just can spot things quicker i guess i mean there's still stuff that i'm learning all the time with with things other than clothes books and shoes and even with those you know i'm still learning new brands i've still i'm still looking up comps on i probably look up comps more now than i did in the beginning um especially with um, shoe brands and stuff just because I I know that shoes actually sell really well and there's a lot of brands that I'm not familiar with so you'll be surprised at some of the ugly ugly shoes <laughs> that make me really good money like ugly comfort shoes they are big sellers so yeah I, I like it's worth looking up the brand sometimes because like they will surprise you and and I, I will say there are still days where I don't look up any comps. I can walk into that thrift shop, go through the racks, bum, bum, and just pile my trolley up. And sometimes I will take a punt on things without looking it up because it's cheap enough to buy. It might be a $2 item and it looks nice quality. Um, it's a style that I know generally normally sells for me and other brands. So I'll, I'll, I'll happily take the punt on on buying things without running comps. But if something is a little bit more pricey, um, I definitely run comps now. And that was something I didn't do in the beginning. So I think that was probably one of my mistakes. But like I said, I think it also helped me grow and it helped me learn. And I think we learn from our mistakes. So um, yeah, don't be afraid of making mistakes. <laughs> Um, are your outlets open? Yes, the outlets are open. So I probably should go out there while some of the thrift shops are shut. Um, thanks, Rob. Um, 
country road's not a big seller for you anymore. Oh, yeah, I, I sold a country road top this weekend. Um, I got full price, so pretty happy. Um, I only sell country road linen items. They sell very quickly. Otherwise, I leave them at the op shop. I've had target items sell faster and get more money than country. Isn't that interesting? Target for more money. But you know what? Target's not all that cheap. When you actually go in there to buy new, it's not It's not actually cheap. So, yeah. Um, so, oh, gosh. Okay, so that was one of the things that I would probably do differently. Now, I had another good question that said in, um, in the 12 months that I've been selling, what are the, some of the same things that you've used from right from the beginning that you still use now? Um, and I think that comes down to the basics. I'm still using the same camera. I'm still using the same white piece of core flute to take my photos on. I still just use the wall to take my photos um still use a tape a tape measure um i still use pool noodles to fill my shoes um to stuff them so that they look nice in photos and um i'm still using tubs uh oh actually in the beginning i used cardboard boxes to keep my stock in um and when i was doing all the nikes i keep them in those big you know when you go to the dollar shop and you get those big stripey kind of plastic bags I, I would keep all my Nikes in those so I had about six six some six seven pairs of shoes into one of those stripey bags and I just had rows and rows of stripey bags and clothes I started with cardboard boxes and then yeah I moved to the plastic tubs not long after I, I soon realized that plastic that um cardboard boxes were still costing me a few dollars to buy new and I was better to invest the money into tops but yeah other than that I'm still using I did have to buy a new computer just because my other one was old and and blew up but in terms of what I actually use to shoot and stuff yeah same camera same backdrop same tape measure scissors like nothing nothing really has changed in that way like I'm still very basic don't have any fancy lights um they are something I am thinking of buying for the new house because the light in here is a little bit dark um so yeah I'm definitely thinking of that as an investment coming up I also think I might need some lights against me for youtube because sometimes it's a bit dark in here and i'm struggling a little bit to get my light right in my videos and um here so let me see um pool noodles yeah nick i don't know if you have them over there but when kids go to the swimming pool and they have those big foam noodles that we call them a noodle and they basically like a floating device and the kids use them to swim on and float around on well you just buy them from your cheap shops and I just cut them up um where are they let me see I know I've got some here hold on so they just come in a big long pool noodle and basically I cut them into different sizes I have a whole heap of sizes and you shove them into the shoe and they just fill the shoe out and make the shoe look like it's more of a display and you can get longer ones to go into like a pair of boots and it'll help hold the boot up nice and um straight for the photos so yeah that's my my tip and a pool noodle costs about two dollars so um like they're so cheap and you can just buy a couple of them and cut them into all different sizes and then you'll always have one to shove in your shoes when you when you're doing your shoe photos <laughs> um yeah floats okay is that what you call them floats okay yep ashley how do you see yourself growing your business in the future Whew. um well, I'd like to definitely grow it. The last couple of months haven't been the best for me um, in growing my business, in all honesty. Um, February wasn't a great month for me. I um, stopped taking my medication, my um, anxiety antidepressant meds, and that wasn't a good month for me. <laughs> 
I shouldn't have stopped taking them. <laughs> and I'd gone cold turkey and it was just, um, it didn't work out. I lost all my mojo and uh, that was hard. And then I moved house the next month and it's just been a little bit of a, um, it's just been a slow process coming back into the same routine that I was in prior to that. So that's a big challenge for me this year and I've definitely, my sales have dropped off because I've had that couple of months where, I mean, one month I didn't list all together and the next month I barely listed as well. So I really have to pull that back now um, to start reaching those goals that I want. But, yeah, I mean, consistently I um, I have sales goals. I want to be sitting around that twelve dollars to $15,000 worth of sales a month um, and I'm down at the moment, so I need to list, list, list <laughs> and pull those sales back up. Um, I guess to I'm, I am looking to grow the business by um, outsourcing some help. So that's something on the cards. I feel like I need um, another hand to help me because I am a volume-based store. I definitely feel like um with the amount of hours that I'm already doing, like I definitely feel like I need a bit of help. So I am looking into some avenues at the moment of um, outsourcing some work and fingers crossed that will help me. Um, and I think that's important as my YouTube grows as well because the YouTube is actually becoming more and more time consuming. And I had to kind of decide how I wanted to take the YouTube as well. And if I want to grow the YouTube, how much time I want to put into it. Because at the end of the day, YouTube isn't paying my bills. <laughs> um, so, I, you know, you can't spend all your time doing YouTube because it's more fun. Um, you have to pay the bills. So, you know, my priority has to be on my eBay store. But um, I have made a decision that I'm to going forward with the YouTube at the moment. I'm going to stick with two videos a week, one live and one pre-recorded. So... I just got to work that into my week now and, um, yeah, going forward, that's that's what I want to do. I want to grow YouTube and I want to grow eBay. <laughs> so I've got to get my sales up. What do your family and friends make of your new business venture? Hmm. Okay, well, I don't talk about it a lot with them, to be honest. Um, most of them don't know I do YouTube. It's not something I put out on my public pages. Um if they do know I do YouTube, they, they are probably watching without telling me. <laughs> um, like my good friends and family, they know that I resell full time. I think some of them think it's like amazing that I can do it. Some of them, I think, think it's a bit weird. <laughs> but I don't think anyone um, is doesn't expect it from me because I'm the type of person that has always done my own businesses and I've always worked from home and I've always had different ideas and just when I've thought of something, I've gone and done it. So, I mean, it's to none of them would be, would, would be surprised that this is the type of thing I'm doing. Um, but, yeah, I, I guess I don't talk about it a lot with them. And somebody did ask me that question. They said, um, do you openly tell people that you are a reseller, um, family and friends, would you tell someone that you just met at a, at a party that you're a reseller? And so the answer to that is yes. If I went to a party now and met somebody new and they said, what do you do as a job? I would say I, I resell full time or I have my own online business. Um, I'm not ashamed of it and I'm not afraid to tell people it. I'm actually quite proud that I managed to do this as a full time job. Um, and I think that heaps of people would love that opportunity to do this full time. So I'm actually quite proud that I'm making it work. Do I earn enough money as a full time seller for this as my full time job? Not really, to be honest. And I've got my husband's income to supplement me. If I didn't have his income, I would be struggling. So don't think that this is easy and you you make heaps of money or anything. But um, yeah, I, it's it's definitely it's definitely tricky. So I don't know. Like, yes, I would tell people that I 
do full time eBay and yeah, I think my friends and family, like I know my my fa- my close family, they're supportive of me. They're interested in it. Um, a couple of them know about my YouTube channel, but some don't. Like my immediate family, like my mom and my brother and my sister and um, a couple of my really good friends, they know that I do YouTube, but a lot of them don't. <laughs> some of my best girlfriends, they don't know I do YouTube. <laughs> I'd be like, they would just think it was hilarious that I was on here <laughs> doing it so (laughs) yep thanks Daryl thanks Nick yep I would tell a stranger quicker than anybody close to me yeah DBG I think um like the other day I went to a charity shop that wasn't really a charity shop it was a lady who was running a charity from her home garage and everything she made she was giving to the charity and um she opened it up the other day for appointments just because um, with the corona and everything. So she opened up this garage for appointments and I went there specifically to look for books and because I saw she had heaps of books and, you know, in the end I told her what I did and, you know, she was just she just thought it was fantastic. She was just like, you know, this is so good. You get to stay home and be with your kids and just to have that opportunity and, and you you know, you're stopping things from going to landfill and, you know, like it's really nice when somebody actually is in, in is encouraging of it because I think sometimes resellers we do get a lot of flack um, that we're doing something that we that that is wrong. You know, like we're buying things, taking things away from other people, and I don't know. Like, yeah, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to say it. I'm, you know. I'm loud and proud. The more I do it, the more confident I'm getting. And, you know, probably it won't be too far off in the future that I actually put it out there a little bit more on my, um, with friends and family, what I'm doing. But, yeah, that's it. Um, how much for the air do you like that? Will I bid it? Will we bid it? Let's, um, <laughs> let's have an auction for my hat. <laughs> I find it odd if friends and extended family watch me on YouTube. Yep. I definitely agree. I think it would make me there's a few people that I don't mind. Like one of my one of my friends who knows I do this, he's home from work today and he said I'm home from work and I was like, "Well, come in and watch me." So, I don't know if he's in here, but if he is, I want him to put his post in the comments so I can see in case I've missed it. <laughs> but I told him, I said, "Come and watch me." But um yeah, I like I wouldn't worry if my mom or my sister or my brother or whatever came and watched me, but there's other people that I, I would. I would feel very judged by it. And um, you know, like there this when you put yourself out like I I understand when you put yourself out here like this, you do get judged, and I certainly do um get judged, and I'm noticing more and more of it as the channel grows so I, I expect more of it but um I don't know it's different to be judged by a stranger than it is to be judged by your family and friends I don't know like it's just it's a bit weird so yeah I'm with you Nick that makes me feel a bit awkward <laughs> um okay where my question how many lists can you do in an hour for the pre-owned clothing including draft measurements and photo Ooh, okay, so Mo, what I normally do is I normally photograph first. So I photograph in bulk. So I might photograph about 30, 40 items of clothing. And then I um, edit all my photos because I use Photoshop. So I go into Photoshop. I don't do a lot of editing, but I just do a little bit of color correction and I resize the photos that are optimized for the YouTube website. I'm um, sorry eBay website. eBay have an optimal size for their photos and I can't remember what it is Um, but I do have like an action that's that's pre-made in my Photoshop so I can just simply click the button and it will resize my photos to that optimal size. Um, So yeah basically I color correct them, I resize them and then I have all the photos ready and then I sit down and list in bulk so I kind of don't just go photograph draft measurement list I I do it in chunks so it's photographing then I sit down for a while and I edit and then I sit down and I you know 
then I sit down and I list. So sometimes like I can do that over even a couple of days. Like I might photograph one day and then the next day I might edit them or the night I might edit them. So time-wise it's a little bit tricky, but if I was just simply listing, if my photos were all taken, they were all ready to go, I would probably get between 20, I would say, around 20 done in an hour of clothing. Um, if I was doing books, I would probably get around... 30 um, done in an hour. So, yeah, somewhere around that 20 to 30 listings in an hour if the photos are all ready to go. So, yeah, it's just trying to it's trying to find like a balance. Like some days it's I'm a little bit out of routine at the moment because, one, the kids are home from school um, and, and home learning. The thrift shops, op shops, they're not really open. Well, we got some of them that are open, but I'm trying not to go out there because I've, I've got some death pile here and I just don't want to be going out while all this is going on as much as I can, you know, like I'm happy to go up and get my coffee every day, but I'm kind of trying to stay out of the shops as much as possible. And I'm not saying I haven't been up there, but I'm not really looking at the clothes. I'm kind of going in there looking at things like books and stuff more than flipping through clothes during this I just less time in those shops the better for me at the moment but yeah I guess to photograph as well you know like I normally spend a, a couple of hours photographing you know editing probably takes me um I, I don't know for editing it like it doesn't take me very it, it's hard to say how long it takes me with editing because I do them in a batch lot so I don't know maybe I spend up to an hour sometimes editing photos in a big batch lot and yeah listing so um that's a tricky question <laughs> what's the main secret to success list 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 um i definitely think the main secret to success is consistency um definitely the more consistent you are the more your business will grow and if that means listing consistently, then yes. But I think it's just eBay likes consistency and whether or not, I don't necessarily believe you have to list every single day um, because when I took a month off, I still was getting quite good sales. So yes, my sales were down um, for that month about 25%, but I was still pretty happy with the sales. So, I, you know, and that was for not listing for four or five weeks. So listing definitely, yes. I mean, my sales are down now because I haven't been listing as much. So definitely the, definitely listing is very important. I'm not going to deny that. It's definitely important. But I think it's just consistency with everything. Find your routine, consistency with what your photos look like as well. I think it's have, everything should kind of, like when you go to your store, I think it's important that, everything kind of has the same look. I don't like when you see a store and everything's photographed different or um, some photos are good and some photos are horrible. Like just try and keep everything consistent going from your photos, going from your listings. Um, I guess my listing, my descriptions are always very similar in every single listing. Um, I try and keep a similar routine with my titles. Um yeah consistency with sourcing consistency with yeah i just consistency that's the secret to success i think Consi people who are consistent will always win because some days it's hard to show up some days it's hard to find your motivation and on those days like you seriously have to push through and if you don't push through then things will go which is basically what has happened to me i haven't had the motivation the last couple of months and you know, it's definitely been hard for me. I haven't been consistent. So now I have to, this month, I'm finally things are settled here. I moved into this house. Um, I'm I'm back on my medication. I, I have just adjusted the dose a couple of weeks ago um, because I did go to the doctor saying I still can't get my motivation back. Like, what do I need to do? So we've upped my dose and... Um, yeah, I, I'm feeling pretty good. So I'm actually hoping that May is my month. <laughs> Let's say May is the month for Mel to come back. Um, let me have a look here. So if I've missed some questions up the top, please like just re-ask them because I'm I'm missing a lot of this chat. Um, uh, 
every day it's hard to show up. It's so hard because like sometimes life just happens and some days we just don't feel like it. And, you know, that's a real, that's something that's hard to learn. And um, I think with eBay, you have to hustle. And I don't know, like once you get to a certain point, maybe you can relax a little bit if that's where you want to go. But if you're trying to build this business, I really believe that you need to hustle and be consistent to, to be able to grow it. And when I say hustle, it just means you have to work on it daily. Um, it, it is a daily kind of job and you might be able to take some time out, but you've still got to be doing a little bit and I don't know. Yeah, just what, exactly like you've got to show up. Um, you make your money when you buy, not when you sell. Yep, buy cheap, buy cheap, buy cheap. Um, there's no secret, buy cheap stuff, enough to make good profit that's in demand, rinse and repeat. That is exactly it. Um, the only offers I get are scams and they are persistent. What is the key to shaking them? That's a strange thing. You're only getting scammed e scammed offers, um, Shiri. I don't I don't know. I don't really most of the offers that I get are actually genuine. Most of them pay for their orders. I don't I don't get a huge amount that purchase and don't pay. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure why you'd be getting scam offers. I must say that when I sold the Nike shoes, brand new Nikes, I used to get scammed way more. So maybe it depends on what you're selling. Um I used to get a lot of people trying to tell me I was selling fakes and I would have to send them all the receipts. I had like a wad like this of Nike receipts. I was like, here's my receipts. They're not fake. Um, so, yeah, I think people scam you sometimes if you've – maybe if you've got higher-end items. I don't know. I'm, I'm not really getting scammed with offers, so I'm not I'm not sure if anyone else can help you out with that. Um, 20, impossible. It's not impossible to get 20 listings done, Krillin. It's easy. You just have to do I, – I mean, I sell a lot – you've got to remember that when I'm selling clothes, I'm selling a lot of similar items than what, that are already in my store. So I simply just have to do push the sell similar on one of my own personal listings and really all I have to do is change the title, a few item specifics, and my description and everything pretty much stays the same. I just copy and paste the title down into my description – um, so a lot of the items, I don't actually have to research how much they're worth because I've, I've got similar ones in my store already, or I know what it's going to sell for just through practice. Um, so yeah, 20 listings is actually very achievable for me when I'm, when I'm selling clothes. It's only take longer if it's items that I'm, I'm researching or don't know much about. But for the most part, because I am volume, I'm definitely selling a lot of the same things. So it's, yeah, I find it very easy just to push sell similar. Um, and I always sell similar on an item from my own store because if you sell similar from an item on another store, another person sells similar, then all the details are missing inside it, like all your description and everything. Whereas if I sell similar on my own personal listing, then all my description is there um, and I tend to keep the same descriptions just with the copy and paste of the titles. Yep. Um, oh, I'm going. Sorry, I can't scroll back up the chat. I'm <laughs> 20, 20 listings an hour and then a long nap. Yep. Yep. There you go. I can get similar for similar items. That's it. I think it definitely just depends. Like if it, definitely if you're doing um Krillin, you also sell like much more detailed suit, men's suits and stuff than me. So maybe um, you've got to do a lot more, maybe a lot more of them are tailored or been altered or they've got more details. But um, yeah, easy for me, easy for me. I get 10 scam offers a week. eBay said block them. Thanks, eBay. I was removing best offer for a week and see if that helps. I'll tell you what else I think with me. Um. And this comes back to when I talk about consistency. I don't change things in my store very often. So there's a lot of people who try things in their store and then go, oh, that's not working. And so each week they're changing things to see if it benefits their store. So like they might go, oh, everything was 2% promoted this week. I'm going to change it to 8% and see if I get an increase or um 
oh, this week I'm going to try free shipping on all my items. Um, and then last week I charged for shipping. And this week I'm going to offer express post. And this week I'm not going to offer express post. And I'm going to try offering same day postage. And then the next week they're back to two day postage. So one thing about my store that I do is everything has been the same since day dot. I have two day postage on my um, items and I've never changed it. I don't offer express post and I never have. Um, I don't have refund refunds on my listings. Yes, of course, if somebody messages me and something isn't right or it's faulty or whatever the case, I do refund them. But my actual listing says no refunds. Um, I don't change the percentage of my goods. My my items are always promoted at 2% and I don't go in and change it. I don't run sales every week. I run them every now and then. I've probably only run four or five sales in my whole year. Um, and I don't, I, I just don't run them. I find sometimes if I run a sale for the next few days after the sale, I hardly get any sales. <laughs> so it's a catch-22. I don't know um, if eBay doesn't like you running a sale I, I often get good results through the weekend when I run a sale but then I get lower results after the sale so I'm, I'm a bit in two minds about the sale and it's not something that I, I do consistently so I think with saying that I'm not one of these people to chop and change my store and I don't know if that hinders people and I don't know if that comes back to consistency where my store just stays the same I don't know, food for thought. I don't know about anyone else. Um, you know, like I would think that maybe Nick, um, you would be similar to me and just you just have the same settings and you don't change it. Um, but I think there's a lot of people who get, oh, I didn't get many sales this week. I must be doing something wrong. Let's go change it. And then they change it and then that algorithm has to fix up to it again. And I don't know. I just sometimes think that's all overthinking and set your rules, set your boundaries set your like it's your store so you make the rules if you want to do two day shipping then do two day shipping if you want to do same day shipping then do it but i wouldn't chop and change it set your rules and keep your store exactly the same yep uh yeah i have repeat customers and i have people that buy multiple um items from me in the store so that's great um, but yeah, I've definitely got repeat customers and yeah, I think that's, that's, that's awesome. I mean, they're, they're what you want. So yeah, definitely sell similar, Murray, write that down. <laughs> definitely sell similar. Um, okay. So let me have a look here at what else. Somebody asked me, what is the next big purchase to make your business better? Okay. So one, I want to buy a label printer. Um, People are often very surprised I don't already have one. And it just comes down to um, building up your business slowly. I don't think you need to buy all the fancy equipment from the very beginning. Just build as you go. Don't spend all your money buying all the flashy stuff. Start out. You know, you don't need it all. I've, been, I've gone a whole year or two years without needing a label printer. Yes, it'll probably make it quicker for me. So that becomes a time investment now that, the business has grown so and I'm doing more volume so that's definitely um, on the cards the label printer um, and the other thing that's probably on the card at the moment is some lighting which I've never really wanted to do but it, it, it um, last week we had some really overcast days here and my room was too dark to photograph clothes in so Yes, I was fine to photograph the books and stuff, but the clothes, no no chance. So it's only April here and being in Canberra, it gets very um, cold and dark. So winter's going to um, be challenging if that's the case. So I am looking now into what kind of lighting I want to purchase and I will be looking to make an investment into some kind of softbox Um I'm not sure. There's a few options that I'm running running up, but I will look into those. And I think I also need a bit of better lighting here for YouTube. So um, YouTube is also something that I want to grow. So I may need some new tools. 
I noticed yesterday um, when I was pre-recording a video that's going to go later this week that I was recording it here on the computer with the webcam and like it looks good on the phone but I kind of feel like on the computer it, it looks a bit out of focus almost and I think it's just the webcam quality so maybe I need to pull out my camera which has got the video recording and start learning how to record more on my camera not sure um the other investment I would like to buy is a GoPro um I think that would be awesome but in terms of eBay yeah it's really you know I'm I'm happy with my storage I've got shelving um one of the best things I bought this year was my packing station. That made a huge difference. I was packing before that on like a trestle table and it was just a bit low and I was getting hunched over and my shoulders and I was like end of the day I was really sore and needed massages. And so packing station that is the right height for you, it's got shelves underneath. Um, I've shown my packing station in my storage video and that was definitely a very good investment was wasn't very expensive a couple hundred dollars and that made a huge difference to um my you know just how I pack the speed at what I pack everything's there in reach less moving around which means less time so um yeah <laughs> sit in the black the led panel lights are perfect for us now small enough to move around and easy enough for pictures and youtube okay that's awesome yeah, I need to, I need to kind of, being an ex-photographer, I'm a little bit, um, I'm probably a little bit overthinking it for what I need for, for YouTube, for eBay. <laughs> I'm a little bit fussy because I always like to buy the best <laughs> when it comes to equipment. So um, I tend to wait it out until I can buy really good quality stuff with, with that kind of stuff. So there's another item that I'm looking at buying. Um, it's out of stock at the moment, but I've got to toss up which one. Um <laughs> Um, my label printer changed my life. Um, yeah. Okay. So what else have I got here? Let me ask some of these questions that I got on YouTube, uh, Instagram, when I asked if anyone had any questions for me, I almost feel like could go into a separate video. They're almost more targeted on how to do certain things rather than, I guess, my experience, but, um, Okay, Judah, 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 whatever you want to call him, Brad, he asked me a good question. He asked me who, oh, where is it? Sorry. <laughs> who has been your biggest influence during your journey? This was a hard question <laughs> and I really sat down and spent some time thinking about this because I think over the 12 months I've been influenced by um, um, a lot of different people. So um, who I started off being influenced with is not who I'm influenced by now, so to speak. Um, I guess when I first started reselling, I was mostly influenced by a guy called The Hustle Bee and another guy called Hustle Hacks. And they were both sneakerheads. They um, are in America and they basically sell Nikes and stuff full time um, and shoes. So I was, they when I got into the Nikes, that's who I was following. Hustle Bee was um, like a, I was hugely influenced by him. He hadn't been doing it all that long, I don't think, at the time. But I remember. One day I'm going to have a look at here on my phone because I actually have his messages. Oh, where is it? I, I want to share this with you because I actually have his messages still in my phone when I used to message him as a brand new seller. <laughs> and some of these messages that I sent him when I was reading them back, I was like, oh, my God, these are like the messages that people send <laughs> send me now. Um, but one day, like I kept asking him, I kept saying to him, you know, I'm trying to learn. I'm being scammed by people. Um, you know, I've had people 
people purchase. I've got Americans trying to purchase when I don't ship internationally. Um, people are leaving me negative feedback saying that I'm selling fakes when I'm not. How do you deal with this? Blah, blah, blah. And then one day he said to me, um, bugger, that's part of the business. You always seem to have something to complain about. <laughs> And I really sat there and went, oh, my God, I do sound like I'm complaining to this guy constantly, like I'm sending him all these messages, trying to learn from him, but why are these people scamming me? How? Why are, why are, they pretend, why are these people saying they're fakes? How, do you get scammers? Do you get this? And I, I was like, I was negative. And in the end, I was kind of like said to him, oh, my God, you know, yes, I am being negative and I'm bringing that to you. And um, he basically said to me, control the controllable. You're so worried about the things that you can't do anything about. And I just think that was like a bit of a wake-up call for me. He's so true. Don't, like, obviously I have anxiety, so <laughs> I do stress about things I can't control about. But it's so true. Don't stress about things early on in your business that you can't control. Um, just... Um, do what you can, learn as you go, um, and um, Ken, you've distracted me <laughs> far out. And I don't know, like, yeah, that was that was just I've kept those messages because that was kind of like a big to look back at that is really showing my journey of how I started and how maybe I was. And I, I see it in the Australian um, Facebook group sometimes, you know, new sellers, negative, negative, you know, this person's whinging about this, this person's is sometimes you just got to let it go and it's just part of business and, um, you know, you, you can't control everything. You don't control the eBay rules. You're selling on their platform and um, you just have to kind of go with it sometimes and, and try and keep that positive, positive mind. <laughs> Ken, thank you. <laughs> Ten bucks towards my dime. <laughs> Um <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that, Ken. <laughs> hey Hassan. Um focus on the things that you can change. Um, <laughs> um there you go. If you knew how much I was stressing about something today, thanks for the advice, Mel. Yeah, gay. I think it's so like we do, we do stress over things that really at the end of the day, we 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 can't change it, can we? We can't we can't change a lot of the eBay rules. The eBay, you know, control what you can do. Do your best you can, and um, yeah, he gave you a good old fashioned. He did. He was probably like, I wish this girl would piss off with all her questions <laughs> and all her negative. <laughs> anyway, um, going back to that, he was a big influence to me, and um, I still follow him. I I'm not. Um, I guess as influenced by him because I'm not doing the whole sneaker thing anymore. <laughs> in more, um, but I do admire the guy, and I think he's got a lot of knowledge. And um, yeah, I still enjoy seeing his posts. <laughs> hey, Meredy. Um, now, who else do I have here written down that in has influenced me? I feel like over the last year I've been influenced by um, some, a couple of American sellers who are kind of I feel like I can relate to the most in terms of that um, they are mums and they hustle, they work hard, and um, that's obviously relatable to me. So two of those mums that I find really relatable are Nicole State. Um, she's calls a spade a spade she's copped a lot of flack um over her youtube and it, it, you know she gets judged a lot she gets trolled a lot but she is down to earth she calls the spade a spade no bullshit um comes onto youtube i admire that she comes on without wearing makeup and just comes in and does the daily vlog and um she keeps it real and she works bloody hard, that woman. She works hard and I, I just have a lot of respect for her. I followed her from the beginning and I still follow her now. The other one that I absolutely love who doesn't really do YouTube but she's big on Instagram and her name is The Posh Hanger. 
this woman, single mother, um, and she smashes through the sales. She friggin' hustles hard and um, she's just, I just, I just love following her. I love seeing her stacks. <laughs> they like shit all over mine. She's just amazing. So, um, yeah, I, I really have enjoyed following um, her. And there's another lady called Hustle at Home Mum. And, you know, she works part time. Um, oh, I wouldn't say part time because she's kind of full time, part time, but she, she juggles it around her kids. So I think she calls herself part time. She's amazing. Um, and I just, I just really enjoy watching her and um, I just, yeah, I just feel influenced by those couple, those few women um, because I feel like they're relatable to me. Um, somebody who's not got anything to do with reselling that has influenced me is Sugar Mama, Sugar Mama TV. She is a financial advisor in Australia and I just, I just really enjoy her. Um, She's down to earth Aussie Aussie girl and um, very smart. Knows how to make money and um, yeah, I would love to learn. I, I would love to have some private skyping with her actually and and learn a little bit more um, about finances. Um, in terms of um, more recently, I would say um, these people have also influenced me a lot. Well, let's go back actually. Brad and Jazz actually, actually really influenced me a lot into starting YouTube and, um, you know, they definitely were there right from the beginning when I, I think I started YouTube like just probably with the push of Brad um, and, you know, I'll be forever thankful for that and, you know, I was the I went on there. The first time I did a live was on their show and, um, you know, so that has been an influence in my journey. Bron, she's been an influence to me. She has inspired me. She has kept me accountable. Um, she works hard as well. And, um, you know, she's just been a really good friend to me. So somebody who is like that is definitely an influence towards you and your business and can pick you up when, when times are tough. So she's a good accountability partner. She's a good friend. And, um, yeah, she's definitely, she's definitely a hard worker as well. And, she, and, you know, she's gone through some hard times. So I really, I just admire her. Um, Tommy. Um, Tommy definitely has been an influence over the last um, last year. Um, he's helped me a lot with YouTube in the early days. And, you know, he's just uh, made me m meet a lot of people in this community. And it's just been an influence to um, my journey. And Nick Hills, <laughs> he's in the chat. He is one of the most inspiring people, Nick and Andrea, um, but just the way that they have their morals, um, the way that they go about helping others, the way they run their business, just everything about you guys, Nick, I know you're here. <laughs> I hope you're still here, but everything about you guys just really inspires me and um, I know there's heaps of people in this community that look up to you and, um, yeah, you, you've definitely been a big influence on my journey and you've been helping me and, uh, I don't, yeah, I, I, like, yeah, you've definitely, um, thanks, Nick. <laughs> Thanks, Nick and Andrea, but you know Nick, Nick especially because Nick, Nick does message me a lot and <laughs> he's helped me. So yeah, thanks, Nick. <laughs> so yeah, those have been my influences, and um, I think they have played an important part in getting me where I am. And um, I'll be forever grateful. And you know, I've also got so many other reselling friends that you know I could name so many here, but in you know. That's that. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> um, okay. One of the highlights for me this last 12 months was going to Queensland and visiting um, Braun and Rod and Drew. Holy moly, we had some fun. Um, thrifting with other resellers was amazing. Um, I learned so much from um, being with other people and just from that whole experience and I can't wait to do it again. And um, 
yeah, I just I can't wait to get back up to Queensland and see those guys again and, and have another hangout. And, you know, that was definitely a highlight in my 12 months. Somebody's asked me, why is my store kept private? Um, and she said it took her hours to find it. And is there a reason why I don't share my store? <laughs> okay, so I, I did kind of think I'd go through this a little bit. There's a few reasons why I don't really announce my, I mean, there's a lot of people that follow my store. If you really want to find my store, you're going to find it. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's easy to find if you really go hunt for it. Um, one, I have multiple stores. So, you know, I kind of just, um, you know, I'm not going to be sharing around multiple stores. It seems, it seems a bit odd. For my main store, I guess there's a few reservations I've got in sharing the store. Um, I know there's some positives to it as well, but I think just in the past, you know, like I have struggled um, with being stalked a few times. Um, I don't know. It just Sometimes it just gets, I don't know what it is. I just feel like then I'm being watched, like I'm being judged, like what if people... Um, I, like I, I don't want people to to copy in such. I want people to find their own journey and do their own things because what sells for me might not sell for you. And um, you know, like I think we all need to learn what we like to sell ourselves. And I, I think I'm pretty open on Instagram and YouTube in the way that I share my tips and I talk about the brands that I sell. And I'm and I'm a very open book. Um, so I, I kind of just feel like I don't want to hinder you into going, well, Mel sells this or Mel sells that, so it does well for her, so it's going to do, do well for me because that's not always the case. So um, I don't know. There's just, I guess, I don't know. Like maybe I'll, maybe as I, maybe that's just something that's part with my anxiety. I don't know. I, don't, <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't know. I just. It's, it's, I, I do actually, sometimes people DM me and say, what's your store name? And I'm fine. I'll share my store name. I don't really mind. Um, I guess sometimes people ask for my store name and they've never made one piece of contact with me before. And that kind of, you know, I don't know, like if, if you've talked to me before and you've messaged me and you've interacted with me and you asked me for my store name, I'll happily tell you my store name. But um I don't know. I know there's some pros to it. I know that, you know, Nick, for instance, since he put his store name out there, you know, he gets a lot of customers supporting him. Um, you know, I, I know there's pros to it, but I guess it's just something that hasn't really sat that well with me in the past. And um, sometimes it's made me feel a little bit uneasy, you know, like also like I'm not some guru. I'm not some, I'm not trying to really teach everybody everything and say just because I do it means it's the right way to do it um you know I still make mistakes I've still got some crap things in my store that don't sell um so I guess I just I just don't want people to sit there and think oh Mel knows it all so if we follow what she's doing it's she's do you know what I mean like I'm I'm an open book I'm happy to share my advice and my tips what I've learned what I've what you know what I do but I, I still think that people get a little bit caught up on looking at what everyone else is doing instead of just doing their own stuff like at the end of the day if somebody's spending three hours looking at my store they'd be better off spending three hours working on their own store so I, I just I don't want to hinder people like that I guess so um yeah <laughs> um Drew's saying the click-through rate can kill your store if you have a lot of people looking and not buying. That's true. Um, the thought of other resellers trawling through your store and checking up on your solds makes my skin crawl. DBG, I actually have put my store into um, out of stock now. So uh, my solds and stuff don't actually come up now in, in listings just because I, I did feel conscious that people were constantly um, checking up what I, what was what I'd sold, and it, I don't know. It just it did. It made me feel a little bit uneasy. It's not. I'm not trying to say it in a bad way or anything. It's just just something for me. Um, um, where are we? Um, <laughs> I'm trying to get it. Okay, let me see. What else? Um, oh. Well, how did you get started? I talked about that. 
Um, somebody asked me today how I'm going with the kids at home while I'm homeschooling. Well, my kids are a little bit older. Obviously, my oldest daughter's working full time. My son is in year 12, um, so that's a little bit of a challenge, but um, he obviously knows how to do his own stuff, so he doesn't really need my help. And the youngest one, she's 10. She's struggling a little bit at the moment, but we're just trying to work through it and um, work around, you know, she does what she can when I'm doing my work and then, you know, I can help her do stuff when, when I'm not. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. The hardest thing for me about having all the kids home is not having my own space. Um, that sounds a bit selfish, but I, I am used to working at home for like those five, six hours of the school day and having that time all to myself. And I haven't really had that since about November last year when the big kids finished school and like it's, it's starting to um, <laughs> send me a bit loopy. I think it's, I, I, I do struggle with it. You know, I have to drive out in the morning and get my coffee and stuff just to have my hour where I'm out of the house and just away. And I do tend to go into the bath every night for a couple of hours. And I think it's just my escape from, you know, put the AirPods in. It's just an escape from all the noise. So yeah, that's the hardest thing. Um, somebody asked, how do you sell fashion that you know is good and it's priced reasonably, but it isn't moving? Okay, so if that was me, I would relist it. I would end it and relist the item. I would look at the photos of it, decide whether or not I need to re-photograph it. Sometimes some fresh photos will also just um, definitely boost boost the listing and just go through your description check everything's right check your item specifics are in there um and just see is it actually like a bad item or is it a bad listing because yeah if, if you if you think it's a good item you think you've got it priced reasonably then perhaps it's just the title you've got a poor title you've got a poor um and it just needs that boost and and I talked about that in, on my Instagram the other day after we did the book live the other day and then one of the guys had sent me a message saying his books he had this set of books that had been sitting there for three months uh six months since last year November or something last year and he just hadn't moved it so, you know, simply all we did was um, sell sim. We just did a sell similar and um, changed the title, changed the description. And literally within those couple of hours, we kept the price the same, sold. <laughs> so, um, you know, that was for the Fifty Shades of Grey's books. And, you know, I just sold some Fifty Shades of Grey's trilogy this morning and Bronze sold some yesterday. So um, go the Fifty Shades. <laughs> Um, I wasn't going to get a store, but I wanted a Terapeak. So I subscribed to a basic store, still deciding if I list enough to get the full benefits. Somebody else did ask that. They said, um, should I sell independently and not set up a store as opposed to having a store? And is it worth selling without a store? <laughs> store, store, store. Um, Yes, if you're only going to be selling part-time and you want to do this as a little bit of a side hustle, you want to sell things from around your house and maybe the odd thing, then you don't really need a store. You can have 40 listings at a time and, um, you know, they can. you can just, that's fine if you only want to keep things small. If you want to progress into reselling um, more often or as a, a, a really steady part-time gig or side hustle, then definitely, yes, I would recommend getting a basic store. But don't go into the bigger stores. You don't need to go into the middle store where you get, um, uh, what is it, like 1,600 items. You can start off with this basic store, which give you 600-odd items. I, I can't remember to be exact, but it's around 600. So go into those basic stores and um, sign up and... Yeah, see, see what you get. Like, um, I, I, yeah, it, it's just like anything with this business. Start slow, start with the basics, and build yourself up. Like, you honestly, you you don't need to rush into everything. So, start with no store and see how you go. Do you like it? Do you want to list more than you're actually allowed? Um, and then move up. If that's the case, move up. The good thing about a store is that you can cancel it at any time. So you're not on like a, um, you're not on a, 
uh, what's it called? You're not on a contract. Like you don't you don't have to sign up for 12 months at a store. You can sign up for a couple of months and if you just find you're not benefiting from it, scrap it. Go back to your 40 listings. So, um, yeah, how long would you keep a listing before getting rid of it? Oh, Dave. Um, to be honest, if it wasn't taking up space for me, like if it was just like, say a clothing top and it's still in my bucket then I'd, I'd probably just keep it there for you know a what like I haven't really got rid of anything to this point where I've gone and re-donated it um especially with books I tend to they're they're more of a, a slow burn for me I'm quite happy to let the books books sit for a while I find that um a book is required for a specific person it doesn't go out of fashion um and it's very it's very easy just to sit on your books if you've got space for them. Clothes is a little bit different. Um, you know, if it's something that looks like it's gone out of fashion, then you'd probably have to reconsider it. But I, I would probably give it at least a year before I would do that. In saying that, my model of my business is to churn and burn. So if I can see there's an item that's sitting in my store for a really long time, then the idea is I want to try and move it. So I'll, if somebody's watching it, I'll send an offer out. If somebody's, um, you know, like I said, I might write, relist the item, reduce the item, change the price, get rid of it as, as you know, try and get rid of it in that way. Um, sometimes if, if I notice, yeah, that somebody starts following or watching that item, I'll send a really, really good offer to that person in the hope that they, they can't say no to it just because I want it gone from the store. Doesn't mean that it, you know, it just means it was maybe sitting there, sitting there for too long. Um, that that's another thing that I do also is as soon as I get a watcher on an item, I send an offer. So even if I just list it that day, if somebody starts watching it, I'll send the offer. Um, except maybe on a book. I tend to let the books sit there. Um, I, you know, I don't have as much profit in the books, so I'm happy for them to sit there. But if I have my clothing or my shoes and an, and somebody starts following it straight away, a watcher, then, yep, boom, sending out that offer straight away because get it while it's hot, get it while they just watched it. Because um, I find that if you have an item that sits there for a while and that same watcher's just been watching it, they're not actually watching it anymore. They watched it some weeks ago when they were interested in buying it and then they're not really thinking about it three weeks later so you've got to get them while they're hot so that would be my tip as soon as you see that watcher on your item send that offer out um yep i have 400 items from the boss's wardrobe clean out she had last week that's awesome free stock free stock are your dvds that you group together selling mine aren't um uh, I sell DVDs as a group if they are like a season um, and I've got the whole lot. So I think it just depends on your pricing for them. Um, I don't know. Like I, I, I'm, DVDs are another thing that I'm kind of quite happy to sit there long tail. I don't feel the need to have to move them and turn them and burn them as much. They don't go out of fashion, I guess. Um, and I actually don't have that many DVDs. I think I've got four tubs of DVDs. Um, so they don't take up a huge amount of space. They tick over for me and they're just kind of like a bread and butter item. They're not like a main seller for me. It's more the clothes that I do try and churn and burn. I definitely want to move the clothes along. The, the quicker I can get those clothes out, I'm, I'm, I'm happier. The books and the DVDs, I'm kind of happier to sit there sit there for longer and the shoes I'm actually happy to sit on the shoes for a while I find they don't go out of fashion I find somebody comes along it depends on the season um I've started this last couple of weeks um noticing ankle boots are starting to sell well so that's showing that you know um winter's on its way and people are starting to think ahead for boots to wear with jeans and stuff so quite happy to sit on I sold a pair of shoes the other day that I've had in my store for about a year um they were a bad buy for me I'm not gonna lie I paid too much for them they were brand new they were retail arbitrage um they were women's shoes I paid too much for them and I just couldn't get the money that I wanted on them so I ended up selling them off for probably what I paid for them and I was just happy to move them I was just happy to get them get them gone 
Um, oh, have I missed? Oh, if, you, if you've sent a question and I've missed it, please like put it back down the bottom because this chat is actually like I just looked up before there was like 68 people. I nearly died. <laughs> So, um, yeah, it, <laughs> well, um, if you do have a question, please put it here because I am, blah, 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 I am rambling. Um, another thing that I've learned along this journey, I think, is it's probably something that I failed a little bit on, is expecting too much of myself. Um, I'm pretty hard on myself. Like, I feel like, I guess it's a common thing, but like I definitely feel hard on myself and I think sometimes having too high expectations um, can be bad. Like I can sit there and go, oh, I really want to list 150 things this week and then if I only list 50 then I feel really bad bad for myself or I can get going in the day and I feel really anxious. It's, I've definitely noticed that feeling coming up again as I'm making the YouTube videos, um, not so much the lives, Um but making those pre-recordeds, they are hard. <laughs> and I think it's because when you do a live, you just sit here talking and whatever verbal diarrhea comes out of my mouth, then it comes out and it is what it is and I've said it. When I make a pre-recorded, like I'm analysing every little thing, I have to do a million retakes. <laughs> I made a video yesterday um, and my daughter said to me, you sound like you sound like a module and I was like what do you mean and she says you sound like like my teacher module at school like the way that you're talking and I was like oh my god I, I I'm not I'm not I wasn't trying to but because I'm I'm doing a pre-recorded almost a script it's <laughs> I guess it comes across like that it's not just blah, blah, blah. it's not like a daily it wasn't a daily vlog you know it wasn't something where I can just ramble on it was a topic that I wanted to discuss and talk about so I had to have notes and anyway when you see it <laughs> you'll probably now be listening to it going she sounds like a module um <laughs> but anyway <laughs> yeah I think we are we were our own worst enemy we build anxiety up within ourselves, whether or not you know it's for anything in life but definitely with YouTube just don't be don't have so much expectations on yourself that you have to you have to get as many sales as somebody else got or why I, I feel bad about myself because my stack's not as big as so-and-so's stack or my sales are my sales are only half of this person's sales, you know, what am I doing wrong? And if you start questioning all those things, then you just end up with this vicious negative headspace and I just think, um, yeah, less expectations, you know, the less we have on ourselves, the better and you will grow more if you just let things go and don't be so hard on yourself and, um, you know, everything everything happens for a reason. We all learn from our mistakes and just keep keep plodding along, keep, keep plodding along. Yep, Murray, that's right. You overthink it. Just check the titles, check the photo quality. Has it been priced right? You've just got to re-go over those things. And I guess if you did it like like just so many times, if you'd gone over a, a listing like piece of clothing, like maybe if you'd relisted it like half a dozen times and it's still not selling and you've changed things up, um, maybe it's time to let that item go and, and re-donate it and write it off as a loss. Um, excuse me, my lips are dry from all this talking. I'm going to lose my voice. I work full time and list and sell part-time it's really hard to find the drive sometimes to list items it so is and it's really hard even if you're full-time I find it hard I find it hard to be motivating myself sometimes you just just recognize when you're in that bit of a lull and see if you can find somebody to be your accountability partner um you know like somebody messaged me yesterday and said you know can you give me a target number to get listed for by next week so you know they, they wanted me to hold them accountable and sometimes sometimes we need to do that and and there's so many people in this community that if you reach out to somebody and say hey I've been a bit slack or I'm struggling with my motivation how do I pull myself back up um, somebody will be there to help you so you know like really try and 
look out for somebody who can do that for you because, yeah, finding mojo is definitely hard. It's definitely a constant daily battle. And you know what? Every now and then it's okay to say, hey, I'm tired. I'm just going ch- to say chill and watch Netflix. <laughs> um, I've, I've heard a couple of meanings about that. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, some days we do literally just want to sit and watch Netflix. We're tired. So um, that's okay as well. Every now and then your body needs that. If your body's telling you I need a rest, but you can't keep doing it every single day, you need to pull yourself back up with that motivation. Yep, definitely getting cold down here, Drew. I think it was six degrees the other day with the temperature thing saying feels like two. Feel like a listing challenge. <laughs> oh, last time, I think we tried to have one a couple of weeks ago and I failed. <laughs> there you go. Daryl's saying put yourself in the customer's shoes. Would you buy it? Um, yeah, and that's that's exactly right. Have a look at it. What, what maybe... Sometimes people send me things and say, hey, can you have a look at my store? And then I look at their photos and I just think that that, those photos aren't selling your item. You know, like you have to remember that this is a secondhand piece of clothing and you want to be able to see that clothing. Like it should be ironed. It should be um, not scrunched up, folded up. It shouldn't be on dirty looking floor. (laughs) Make it look like you're actually trying to sell it. (laughs) So, yeah. Could you give some tips on getting eBay to raise your selling limit quickly? Oh, look, I think they have their, um, they're fairly strict with their rules. I know when I opened up my secondary accounts, I definitely had to um, wait a few months. I was on restrictions just like anyone else, even though I had one store that was going really well. You, you get a certain amount of listings for a month and then the next month they increase it and then after about three months, your selling um, limits are raised but really the best thing you can do to get your your selling limits raised is to to get some feedback um you need some feedback on your store whether or not that means you go and buy some stock some something from like if i want to get added when i was starting my store and i wanted some extra feedback i went and bought post satchels from australia post i bought bulk sticky tape i bought bulk things like this from stores that would give me positive feedback in return so it helped helped grow my um, trustability, I guess. Um, And I think just really making sure if you've got that new store and you're trying to build, um, you know, your selling limit, make sure you're posting on time, make sure you're answering questions, really make sure you're doing all that you possibly can so that from eBay's eyes, you look like you are, you know, doing a good job. Meredy, I try to pretend I'm a big business even though I'm only a one-woman show. Otherwise, buyers can do my head in. Yeah, and you, you, this is a business. So, um, you know, you can't be emotionally affected by everything that goes on. Um, you definitely, um, yeah, you, you, do think of yourself as a business and treat it as a business. And remember, this is your business. You set the rules. So if somebody asks you for something, oh, can you do this for me, blah, 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 and that, that's not that's not in your guidelines or that's not what you actually want to do, then it's okay to say no. You are in charge. You are the boss. So, yep. Um, so, yeah, I see some photos where the background is more interesting than the item. Yeah, that is true. And I think on some sites like Depop and stuff, that's actually allowed. Like you, it's actually funky to have like a cool backdrop or or something. But personally, as for the Google algorithm, it likes to have a plain white backdrop. Um, and, you know, the more you can get into the Google ag- algorithm, the more you're going to get picked up by eBay. I definitely think just keep things simple. Like just don't overcomplicate things. Don't um, just keep it simple. That that's my opinion. Um, where are we? I can't see. <laughs> There's too many comments. <laughs> um, okay, what else? How regularly do you end, relist and sell similar? Okay, um, I often will try and do some daily. So some of the items that are um, coming up, you know, like 
ending that day or whatever. I think if you can get into the habit of relisting those, I think it helps. Um, so I don't do it every day. I some days I get caught up, but yeah, definitely if I if you even if you just got to spare like twenty minutes a day, if you just sit down with a cup of coffee and go right, I'm just going to spend twenty minutes and I'm just going to end and relist some of the older ones in that twenty minutes and. That will bring activity to your store. Um, your store will look active, and also those those listings will get a new lease on life. So, you know, I I I try and do it as often as I can. I would like to do it daily. I don't currently do it daily. I just have a lot going on. But um, you know, realistically, we can all find twenty minutes of twenty minutes in the day. And I reckon if you sell end and relist. Um, for 20 minutes a day, it'll really boost things for you. And I know Drew's in the chat, Drew Reselling, he um, he does it every single day. He's really, um, his store gained, a, like last year when they had all the item specifics glitches within eBay, his store dropped dramatically. He started ending and relisting consistently and he still does and he's seen a huge shift in his store. So I definitely think it's worth trying to do that daily because it's amazing what you pick up as mistakes when you go back into doing that. You might have an item specific wrong. It might be in the wrong category. That's another thing. If you sell similar on somebody else's item, like say you're selling a, like I did it the other day, I was selling a CD and I don't normally sell CDs. So I did a sell similar on one that was sealed similar because I had to look up how much it was worth and I don't normally do them. And when I went into the listing, it wasn't even in CDs. The other person's, it was in like DVDs. And I was like, if I didn't look at that carefully, my listing would have been put up into DVDs. That CD would never have sold. <laughs> so, um, you know, sometimes just by ending and relisting, you will notice little mistakes like that, especially if you are one of these people who has been sell similar if you have been using the cell similar from other people's listed items. <laughs> will I be doing a di I promise I will. Okay, when I get my Dymo, I'll make a whole big deal about it. Everybody, look, I've got the Dymo. <laughs> That's so funny. No, yeah. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I don't know, like there's somebody did ask me as well, do I ever use stock photos for books and clothes? And the answer is no. It is a no-no for um, eBay. And I know people, I think Georgina, she's not here in the chat now because it's very late over in the UK. And to everyone who's in my chat that's from UK, I really appreciate it. <laughs> um, but um, you you can get your store, um, you, can, you can get, um, what's it called? A suspension on eBay if you use a stock photo. Um, I know Ken's also had the issue and I just think you're better off to take your own photo. Like um, they've got, if you use a stock photo, you're going to get somebody who's going to complain, oh, mine doesn't look like that or mine doesn't sit like that or whatever. I just, I, I don't. I use um, all my own photos, whether or not it's a DVD, a CD, a book or clothing. I never use a stock photo. Okay, Nick is saying he uses the stock item, the photos if the item is new. Yep, I guess if it's a new item and it's also like current stock and there is a stock photo because sometimes it's hard to find a stock photo anyway. But, um, yeah, there you go. Gay is saying can you use it if it's a new item? Um, I think you might be able to use one stock photo, but I think you would be better to use a stock photo and still use your other photos as well so you show the actual item i don't i'm not 100 percent sure i'm not an expert on it i don't use them so um it's just something i choose not to do and um yeah i'm not 100 percent sure i don't want anyone to quote me that i said you can use a stock photo um I love people that use stock photos because I know my listings photos are far better. <laughs> so I don't know, like I just think shows the actual item and, you know, they know exactly what they're going to get for then. Um, 
I only use a stock photo for my cheap DVDs and I haven't had anything come back from eBay. Yeah, well, Ken sells DVDs and he's definitely had some issues of late. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, it's just one of those things that I would be a bit weary of and I don't want anything to hinder my store. Um, you know, this store is my income. It's my money. It's my bread and butter. So, um, you know, I just try and do everything, I guess, by the book and, and write and that's it. I remember you saying about thank you cards. Someone sent one to me and I'll be going to Vistaprint and basically copying theirs as it was well worded. So that's awesome. Um, yeah, definitely go to Vistaprint. If you don't know how to do it, go to my video. I showed you exactly how to make them. And um, I definitely think it's just a nice little touch to get a thank you card in the mail and um, just makes it a little bit more personalized and, you know, it's good. The big media buyers over here have so many thousands of listings all using stock photos for used items. Yeah, but uh, is it because they are like a brand, like say um, your high, like for us, we've got JB Hi-Fi. Like they can probably use a stock photo because they are a store and it, everything is, new. I don't know, like because they're an actual media store, maybe they're, maybe it's different rules. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not an expert. <laughs> I don't do it. Um where are we? Um, have I missed any? I'm trying to, I'm actually scrolling back up because <laughs> I'm in the stream yard. So I'm going back up. Um, I can't see, but if there's a question, let me know. <laughs> Thanks, Kent. Nice to see you again. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I've been talking for an hour and 40 minutes. I've still got 60 people here and my voice is like, I need a drink. <laughs> um, somebody's asked, uh, somebody's asked me a few, there's a few other questions there. I don't want to look like I'm not, in, not um, asking them, but I think I'll actually make separate videos on them because I think they're probably more, more, the, easier to understand or something if there's a video so I think that would be good but yeah I don't know anyway I guess to recap it it's been an awesome year um it's been a really awesome year I have um made so many friends in this community um I've probably lost some friends as well which is sad but you know sometimes shit happens um and I just think, you know, just, I don't know, do the business. Don't compare yourself to others. Um, don't be too hard on yourself. Don't have too many expectations. Um, find a tribe that you trust and um, just enjoy the ride and have fun as you go about it and, um, you know, just enjoy it if you don't enjoy it don't do it you know I'm very big on that in life if you don't enjoy something don't bloody do it <laughs> nothing should be a chore so um you know if you love reselling then go for it and you know if you're new to reselling start small try it you're going to make mistakes you're going to buy things that aren't going to sell well for you you're going to buy things that don't make you a whole lot of profit Remember, it's all a learning journey. None of us got where we are overnight. We've all had to work really hard to build businesses and get lots of sales and to keep those sales coming in regularly. Um, all of that comes with experience and the more experience you have, the better buys you will make. I certainly make better buys now than I did when I was starting out and I certainly paid too much for items when I started out. And that's just all part of it. Um, remember in the first few years of business, um, <laughs> in the first few years of business, um, you know, generally you don't make money <laughs> or a lot of it. Like you've got to be prepared to do the hard yards and not make a huge amount of money in the first few years of a business. And, you know, that's just the reality of it and, um, you know, so don't be hard on yourself if you're not making a huge amount of money to start with. Just work it to see if you can, um, you know, if you can make this your job. Um, 
<laughs> thank you, Kit. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you, guys. I just like. I just can't. I'm so excited. Like I had like over 60 people today. Like it's just amazing. Like I'm honestly humbled. Um, I can't believe 60 people want to come in here and hear me waffle <laughs> and just talk. I don't know about anything. Um, but like I just want to take this opportunity as well while everyone's here just to say thank you so much. Like I am really appreciative. Um, I have thoroughly enjoyed my Instagram journey sharing my reselling um story with you all i i can't wait to share more of it with you guys um and do remember i am a open book and somebody actually said to me yesterday when they they sent me a message and i replied and they actually said to me you know thanks very much for replying i've actually messaged so many resellers and they don't reply and um you know one i feel that's a little bit sad <laughs> But, um, you know, too, it can get, you know, sometimes it can get busy to reply to everyone. And um, I try to re reply to as many people as I can um, with their questions and I'm, and I'm happy to help. So, you know, if you do want to reach out for me, you are more than welcome. Um, but, yeah, I just, I just really appreciate all the support. And, you know, I've loved my first year of selling full time and I can't wait to see what the next 12 months bring me. And, you know, I'm here for the long haul. You're not getting rid of me, get, getting rid of me. Um, um, you know, everybody's stuck with me. So, yeah, I look forward to like sharing more, I guess, along the way and sharing more on Instagram, trying to share a bit more of my personal life on Instagram lately um, or just a bit more about my daily life, I guess. Um, some selfies <laughs> because really nobody's here to take well, the kids are here to take photos of me, but I suppose, like, um, I don't know, just trying to share share things up a little bit. <laughs> and, um, yeah. Um, oh, how do you know where to go from private to opening a store mail? I think I just talked about that that um, earlier. So maybe just go back a little bit in the video and you'll find that where I, where I talked about going into a store. But, um, you know, going in, when you go into a store, um, you know, it's just as you want to start increasing how much you want to sell. Be yourself and stay safe. Um, sometimes people come into your life and they're not meant to stay. Congratulations on the past 12, past year. I look forward to the next 12 months. Thank you so much. And, um, you know, guys, I do have a new video coming out. <laughs> I'm just going to give it a plug. Um, it's coming out on Friday morning and um, I'm a bit nervous about this video. <laughs> um i don't know I just, I just feel a little bit anxious about it and um anyway if you do watch it <laughs> and you like it if can you let me know <laughs> because i don't know you'll probably i don't know i i, I i'm not going to say anymore but anyway i do feel a little bit um anxious about it i don't know i, I don't really know why but um anyway <laughs> either you love it or you hate it <laughs> But if you like it, give me give me a little thumbs up. <laughs> no, it's not the robot one, Mel. Nick, <laughs> Nick, I'll, I'll send you a teaser with my thumbnail and see what you, <laughs> see what you think. <laughs> um, thank you, guys. Okay, I'm going to turn it off. If you've got any more questions, still feel free to send them through on Instagram, and I might make another video with um, just answering some of the specific questions. And next week, I will be back on Tuesday. Um, I'll probably be solo again, so um, we'll work out a topic or something to chat, and, you know, that'll be good. And I've got a couple of people lined up who are going to come on for some chats over the next couple of weeks. One of them I'm super excited to get on. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to hook up a date with him soon and that'll be awesome. But can't wait. Thank you, guys. Thank you all for sticking around for nearly two hours. That's two hours. I need a drink. Okay. Thanks, guys. See ya.